Please refrain from all Twilight, True Blood, and Vampire Diaries jokes in the bottom comments. Nah, I'm just kidding. You guys probably have better jokes than I do. Okay, so uh, this review comes as a, as a request from uh, the account name of MaxG316. Now, I just watched the commentary for uh, Thirst, the episode of Smallville that introduces the vampire mythology. And it's interesting because one of the things that they start off with is the people, I think it's the writing staff, maybe some of the producers and um, directing staff of Smallville, where they're pretty much saying, we'd like to welcome you to what the heck were we thinking? They actually regard this episode, Thirst, as the worst episode for them of season five because they thought that it was just a ridiculous idea that um, it didn't really make sense and they kind of didn't like it uh, how it kind of paid off but it wasn't that bad to me but it's vampires so yeah it kind of is a little stupid but hey you never know um, so basically what starts off the episode is Chloe at the office of the Daily Planet where the editor-in-chief is Carrie Fisher who is known mostly for her portrayal of Leia Organa in the Star Wars saga and she is there for an interview for an internship and she basically has Chloe come all the way there just to tell her that she doesn't like her she's not getting the internship well that was nice um, so what happens from there is Chloe decides to stand her ground and say you know what you had to start off so where I was eventually you had to be at the bottom some time or another so she convinces the editor to let her um, find her story and bring it to the Daily Planet for, to prove her worth. So the story she finds is on a sorority vampire house at Metropolis University. Okay, yeah, this is where it's gonna get weird. So what happens is Lana has ended up going to Metropolis University and she tells Clark that she's going there to study, I think it's astronomy, and she's going to try for a sorority. So she applies at this place called Tri-Sci, which is headed by a person by the name of Buffy, and Chloe changed the name of the actual person in the Smallville continuity, so if you, any of you are thinking, oh ha ha, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, yeah, she kind of just put that into the article. I don't know why. Could have thought of a better name lots of better names anyway um guess it was just an inside joke so what happens there is uh lana goes for the initiation and she gets in and after that what happens is um she gets okay if you have seen i forget what the episode is called i believe it's facade smallville was getting on the bandwagon of sort of what a lot of TV shows are doing these days, which is the lesbianism kiss. Now, this is where I really think that TV shows are really just doing this just for the ratings. If you're going to have a meaningful relationship between two people, be they two women or two men, that's fine. If it's working with the story, that's fine, but don't just do it for no reason. But that's going back to facade. Anyway, so here they really just show it off screen. They show the shadows. So I'm surprised that Smallville didn't take advantage of that opportunity. Maybe they have some morals better than a lot of TV shows. Um, so what happens is they kind of... Um, Lana becomes a vampire because she gets um, the blood kiss by another vampire, Buffy. And she starts to become one of them. And in the meantime, Clark is actually being uh, pestered by his history teacher, Professor Milton Fine, played by James Marsters, who is under the belief that Lex is going to, you know, he's really evil. And he's uncovering all this Luther Corp stuff. And Lex confronts him, because he's been doing this for a while now, and he says, basically, I don't... I'm sick of this crap, and I know people at your school's review board, and I can get you fired. So, um, Fine starts to, like, you know, come up to his game, uh, or his challenge, and says, okay, here's all the information on me, and I know that you have LexCorp, or LutherCorp ex uh, experiments on campus, and I wonder what the review board would think of that. 
So Lex knows that there's something more to this guy. So what uh, Fine ends up doing is going to the spaceship. And uh, one of Lex's guards tells him not to touch it. Um, and he's about to shoot him. But what happens is, if you've ever seen Terminator 2 uh, Judgment Day, where the T-1000 is made of liquid metal, that's really what you sort of have with Fine here. Fine kind of turns his finger into a giant long needle that impales the guy. And so that's the end of that, I guess. That's sort of showing that Fine is more than human. A lot more than human. Um, so in the meantime, Clark is busy dealing with Lana, who's sort of having all these mood swings with her new vampire identity. And yeah. So they, him, and, him and Chloe decide that there's got to be something more to this tri sci sorority. So they go to a costume party where Clark is dressed up like Zorro. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. It's just kind of random. All right. I'll go for it. Kind of figured Batman would go for Or Bruce Wayne would be wearing the Zorro costume. But what do you know? Um, so he goes to find Lana, who is actually wearing, um, a very close, um, sorry, fly. Um, she's wearing a very close costume to that of the Catwoman, uh, character from the Adam West Batman TV show. And she confronts Chloe, who knows that there has got to be something more to this. She comes to the, like, theory that, uh, Lana is a vampire. And, um, she pulls out the cross and it doesn't work because she's not anything supernatural so Lana bites her neck and uh, Clark goes to take her to the hospital he takes Chloe to the hospital and um, Buffy and he, he's also taken a newspaper article of um, from Buffy's room that has her you know it says like she was involved in a bad attack um, years ago so with Chloe in the hospital fine comes and tells them to ask uh, Lex about a certain Luther Corp project and so when he does it, he finds out that Luther Corp helped uh, Buffy with a meteor, a kryptonite infection that went from stalactites to um, infecting bats that bit her. So that's where it sort of got the whole vampire thing mixed into Smallville. Okay. Whatever. Um, so Lana comes in. Um, so she goes to attack Clark. Now, Clark is near a meteorite, or a, a kryptonite stalactite, so she bites his neck, and so when she takes his blood, she is able to shoot uh, heat out of her eyes. And uh, what happens is she realizes Clark's secret now, obviously, so she wants to turn him into a vampire. So she brings him back to um, the sorority, where she confronts Buffy who does not want Clark to become a vampire and so she uses her heat vision to blow her to ashes wow Lana just killed somebody and she wasn't the living dead like all the other vampires she was alive Lana just murdered someone and we're never going to address this fact again I don't know um, so she is about to bite Clark when Clark uses this antidote that he brought from Lex's office to stab her in the heart. And Lana later talks about, um, he later talks to uh, Clark about, she talks like, okay, Clark is talking to Lana, finding out if she remembers his secret. She doesn't. But here's the thing. She remembers that she bit him. And you know what there does not seem to be anything of? Bite marks on Clark's neck. He doesn't even have a frickin' bandage on there. And she doesn't say anything. Hello? It's your frickin' neck. You're gonna see it a lot. I don't know, like, that always kind of bugged me when I realized that, that it's, it's a frickin' neck and she doesn't see anything. That's the point. She doesn't see anything. Um, yeah, that was ridiculous, but she doesn't remember it. But she feels like she was very close to him because she felt his warmth and his strength. So it's corny dialogue. And Fine be 
or Lex believes that Fine knows more than he's letting on. And Chloe ends up getting the job at the Daily Planet, after all. Um, so she gets an internship at the basement of the Daily Planet. And she, that's where uh, she, we get the Daily Planet set now on Season 5. So that is my review of Smallville's episode, Thirst. Okay, go ahead. I know you want to do it. Go and make all the True Blood and Twilight and Vampire Diary jokes you want.